Dear class, uh, this is uh, operations management. Uh, good to be with you again, this time digitally. Let's see if that makes a difference and see how you like the experience. It should be part of your collective experience. You need to be uh, updated and upgraded to different ways of learning modes. This is just another way of delivering the same information. So here's what we're going to do. We, I'm going to recap on week seven. So if you go to your LMS, you can do that on your own. If you can't hear me well, just uh, turn the volume on on your computer. Um, this is week seven, and I have this document here, process analysis and design. As you could see, you cannot see the other ones because I don't want you to get used to um, reading the PowerPoint before you come to exam, and therefore you encourage not to do well. You need to read the book rather than the PowerPoint. PowerPoints are just pointers. They point you to what topics to read in the book. The book is your reference, primary reference. All right. So um, let's talk about process analysis and design. Uh, this is an important topic. Uh, there are a few things I need to do emphasize with you on the importance of process analysis and design is a systematic approach to improve our understanding of the business process, the business process. And um, so of, our, of, of any even organization, really, whether it's public organization, government entity, or a private business, to assist in realization or in realizing of tangible benefits such as cost. All right, so here I'm trying to color the important stuff that you need to know. So when we do so realizing tangible benefits, meaning I need to see the tangible benefits, I need to feel it, see it. Uh, cost reduction, process efficiency, and I did emphasize this before on, on Tuesday's class. And effective resources, not just the human resources, but resource allocation in general, because resources goes go beyond the human. So allocation of resources, this way I'm able to deliver to an organization. So process analysis, we start with the process analysis and then we design. So process analysis first and then we can go on designing a process. So I have to understand the business process first. All right. Um, so the process analysis and design team in an organization, which are people usually business-minded people, such as yourselves. Uh, our organization Excellence support campus clients on their journey towards high performance. So that's what we want, high performance. So how do we do that? By combining talent, meaning people with experience or knowledge. Um, experience, here we go again. And campus meaning an organization, really, on, on a given organization knowledge so you have to understand and know the process a comprehensive array of methodologies this is always uh, of importance meaning you look at various options various ways methodologies here I'll just put it ways okay of doing things of possibilities and framework of deliver status or frameworks of delivery all right so this is basically uh, is a self-explanatory, meaning we have to have people who combine the ability of talent and experience and knowledge and understanding of comprehensive methodologies, different ways of creating a framework that delivers results. That's what we all want. That's what all organizations want. Perfect. Next, organizational excellence there. What, is it, what does that mean? Organizational excellence. Okay, so it delivers basically, it delivers services. And this is what I was emphasizing during this week that is, the modern economy is a service based economy. <coughs> Excuse me, there. You can still feel that I'm still sick. I'm not feeling well, so, but I'm trying to upload this to your. The link where you could watch it on your on your own time. I'm still not feeling well, still under the weather. 
under the radar. So the Process Analysis and Design Initiative help businesses basically, uh, or business units. When we say campus, meaning really an organizational, um, organizational, organizational units to achieve immediate benefits, right? And durable value. Uh, you need to know your terminology. Durable means something tangible, something flexible. Okay, but most importantly, value, delivery of value. So let's create a relationship here between delivering. I'm trying to see deliver between the word deliver. All right. And let's do it in blue so you could see it and you can distinguish it. Deliver and value the word value so this way you can maybe connect the two we need to deliver value okay and that's what everyone's concerned with value you need to can you argue a delivering solution is delivering value yes of course value could be delivering a new solution different kind of solution better cheaper faster more flexible uh, using less people in the process, using better technology, and that's exactly what we mean by delivering value. Okay, any value, any form of value. All right. So here, delivering value. Okay, just so you could understand what we're talking about. All right. Uh, leading organizations strive for continuous process improvement. I need you to be aware of that. I need you to understand that very well. What we mean here is continuous improvement. If you remember Kaizen, such in, in, the, in the idea of Kaizen, which is continuous improvement, to create value and optimization in complex and uncertain environment, an uncertain global environment, maybe it would be better, global business environment, okay, or economic environment in a global environment. So complex and certain are keywords here. This will also help you to read and understand how you should read and you fish for business words that, uh, or when you, while you're reading you look for the main ideas and the main themes, okay, so this is what we create. So an example would be, anyone uh, can remember last class we talked about Kaizen, so the idea and an example would be Kaizen, the Japanese in Japan, and we spend time on explaining Kaizen, okay? Concept of continuous improvements, that's Kaizen. All right, just save it. Um, so well-planned process analysis, Okay, now we're going to talk about adequate or best approach. All planned process and design initiative delivers sustainable process improvement. Okay, so let's stop and think about this for a minute. What do we mean here by sustainable process improvements? Meaning ongoing and always. Okay, we're always improving. So a well planned process and design always has a mechanism of always improving and again when I go back to the concept of Kaizen uh, it does it does that it, it does just that which is it delivers sustainable process improvement in key areas could be anything uh, could be human resources could be finance could be payroll administrative operations which is what we are concerned with operations uh, customer service Definitely, or delivery of services in general, okay? Um, so that's what we mean by well-planned process. So we are concerned with process analysis, okay, and design. This is my primary objective, so that's what I have to make sure that's what it delivers. Otherwise, then, let, maybe this is the wrong color. All right, let me just see if I could get it to change colors. Okay, uh, it delivers sustainable process improvements in various areas, in key areas, okay. All right. 
let's go to take a look at this framework here. Let me just save it and then enlarge it. All right, let's take a look here. Process analysis and design projects. Yeah, why do we say projects? Because projects, as I explained, uh, are different from operations. Operations is something we study and we examine this semester in this course. Projects tend to be different. They have specific beginning, specific end, and they produce something unique. Uh, so uh, many of the projects we do today in modern organization are project-oriented, meaning specific beginning and specific end, but they all follow the pattern of planning, analysis. Only when we analyze, we can design, and then we implement. And as I explained, this is the most difficult part because implementation where things go wrong. And that's, that's our concern here is that implementation, you could have great planning, great analysis, great design, uh, but when you come to implement things, doesn't do well or doesn't go well or doesn't go as you plan. Right? So what do we do? We replan or reevaluate. We evaluate in post-implementation or while we're implementing, we evaluate. And if implementation is not going well, what we do is we go back to planning. The planning could be perfect, nothing wrong there, not perfect, but you know, good enough. Analysis might be wrong, which is the wrong analysis. Or if analysis is good, the design, the solution we have designed is not well. And therefore, when I come to implement things, it doesn't go well. So I have to redesign and then re-implement. So it could be, if the problem could be either in implementation or in planning or analysis or design, any of these stages. And we each step is explained what you have to do, what you have to identify, what you have to analyze, and what you have to deliver. All right, let's go to the next slide, uh, which is pretty much the same thing. I just tried to, it's the same slide, it's the same diagram, I just put it in a separate slide. Okay, so in a process improvement, just enlarge this, maybe it will be more helpful. Process improvements, analyzing processes, we, meaning we're trying to improve the process. That's what we're concerned with this week. Part of your job as a manager is to improve, continuous improvement, improving the process. And the process, remember, it's just the collection of steps was in your midterm exam as well. Collection of steps you take to improve things, right? Right, just <coughs> excuse me. All right. So, so how do you go about process improvement? First, you analyze existing and current processes. So let me just go here for a second and try to intervene because I want to improve the process of you learning this. To make it simpler, existing, current, or future or planned, let's say instead of future, we'll just say planned uh, processes, existing or or planned processes. So we have to con constantly improve this. Take a look at it, evaluate it. Take a look at how we can improve it. All right, how we can improve it. All right, let's just uh, enlarge it. Then designing or redesigning, meaning if the existing process is not optimal or not good enough or not efficient enough or costly or ineffective, then I need to design a new process. Okay. Uh, sometimes you have to, or you're required to design an entirely new process. Here you have to redesign. So either you're designing something new or redesigning existing processes. Managing continuous processes improvement is something an ongoing, it's an ongoing part of your job as a manager. It's essential component of your of your job as a manager, that is to continually or continuously manage and improve processes. All right. Um, let me just, uh, all right. So, Process improvement, analyzing process, you understand, first and foremost, you must familiarize yourself with existing processes, understand and define organizational process requirements. So we start with requirements. What is, that, what is it that's required of you? Or what, is, what are the steps involved in the process? 
only if I can understand, as I explained on Tuesday's class, only if I understand the steps, tasks involved in the process, then I can understand or define what is needed or organizational objectives and how I can come up, design or redesign an optimal process. Perform problem identification analysis, meaning identifying bottlenecks, problems, uh, difficulties, where is the cost mostly is being located, what, is, uh, what are the areas of cost, for example, or inefficiencies, uh, is it time, what are the time consuming, if I'm concerned with time, reducing time. So this is the process of analyzing. Conduct organizational context analysis, meaning whatever I'm doing and designing in the process, it has to fit within organizational capacity organizational structure and organizational objectives All right so uh, let me just add this here so we don't forget it context analysis meaning organization structure uh, capacity okay uh, meaning the abilities existing abilities and structure all right, let's go to save just before, although it saves automatically, but still it feels good to be able to save. Business process mapping, and business process mapping is described very well in your book. That is, and I showed you that on the board when I drew a map of a process, remember? And I drew another map of a different process, of the online process. Let's say you want to deliver something online, and how we were able to see which process is faster or better or more convenient to our customers, right? Process requirement engineering, that's when you design uh, the steps involved. You design the steps involved in the process. This could uh, or may require understanding of technology or certain technological tools. So what you do is you bring on board or in the team experts, as we said in the previous slide, people experts, people with the knowledge, of different areas, uh, different technologies that they can help and assist. So you, this is something usually done in a group or in a team. That's why it's called a project. Um, although it's an ongoing process, but sometimes you are given a task or a project just to improve certain area or reduce a cost or reduce the amount of time taken. So it becomes a project because it's a one-time uh, one time thing to do. It's not an ongoing Okay, Kaizen, however, is something an ongoing, meaning improvement is an ongoing process. But even though if it's an ongoing, you could still what? You could still, um, uh, you could still do it in a project, meaning one project at a time or one improvement at a time by improving the overall process. You don't, you, you don't have to improve the entire process in one shot or in one time. So it will be small steps, small time. Workshop facilitation, this is when you meet and you have feedback with the rest of the team members or uh, different departments or various stakeholders involved to facilitate this. You could also gain requirements, understand the requirements, what is the process is all about and what is it requ it's required to do. Um, reduce process waste, identify measures, process efficiencies. This is stuff you're concerned with. Uh, future state process a visioning meaning let's envision together what's the output to be or the future result to be or what value you want to introduce process change impact analysis meaning look if I'm gonna change any step in the process what's the impact on everything else on employees on the organization on cost okay so that's what we mean here maybe I should add it um, on, on the organization on the organization, employees, cost, time, or simply money, uh, which we did mention cost, so there's no need for it. All right, so that's what it means. Let's go back here. All right, <coughs> process re-engineering, we explained this last class, that process re-engineering is redoing. Instead of 10 steps, two steps, or three steps, or seven steps. That's what you re-engineer the process. You don't uh, accept status quo, which is the same thing all the time. You have to look for better ways. So we have to restructure, re-engineer ourselves, right? 
in jail or workplace. Um, process uh, stakeholders identification impact analysis, meaning look, any changes we do in the process, how is this going to impact our stakeholders? I did not mention that here. Although employees are stakeholders, but they're actually sometimes owners, uh, the city maybe, people in the city are stakeholders. So how is this going to impact them? That's what we do analysis. We can also call this risk analysis. In project management science, this is called risk analysis. Process solution assessment. So the solution I'm trying to ev evaluate and validate, validate it by try it. Trying it or testing, that's what validation you try to, or maybe simulation on computer. Or maybe you talk to people who already implemented changes you're trying to implement and see if it worked for them or not. That's what validation is. So you assess and you evaluate really the solutions you are trying to come up with. Mapping, uh, identification, or identification of key process performance. Let me just stop here a second. There's something I want to do. Remember, that's what we're discussing, really. Process improvement, which is analyzing existing, current, designing, and redesigning, and managing continuous process improvement. So we are at the level of uh, the third element here, which is process improvement. And basically saying, identify key process performance indicators, matrices. You identify the key process performance indicators, meaning every performance, every step, or every task, or every node, sometimes it's called, it has indicators. What are the key indicators? Okay. Um, you could have matrices for that. We discussed few matrices. The book also goes and elaborate on matrices, on various matrices. Okay. And the engineering or engineers usually are concerned with such matrices. A lot of them get very complicated for you. And it's a function of engineering, really. Uh, that's why uh, this is a course that is also advi advisably to be taken by engineers. Process error prevention. This is something we are big on manufacturing, for example. They're big on error prevention because any errors would what? Would cause defects, right? So we want to reduce uh, errors to zero or next to zero or near zero, right? This is something quality management and quality control people are concerned with. Uh, voice of the customer strategies, meaning uh, you need to understand the, or get feedback from uh, of the customer or the consumer, or our customers, meaning our clients. They have to be involved. They're also stakeholders. Process defect corrective action planning, meaning how can I improve the process by taking corrective action? What actions? If there's an error, what can I do or what the employee should do? If you have an employee and you are in a managerial position and you tell them, look, whenever you have uh, a defect or whenever you have an error, so what he or, should, or he or she should do? What are the measures or what are the steps they should take to correct? So they need to know and you need to test that to see whether it's valid, whether it's valid or not. Um, right work, uh, right first time framework development, meaning you try it the first time to be the right way, rather than doing and redoing and redoing and redoing. Try to have it done right first time. You see if you could test it as well, because each time you test whether it works or not, it will, it will cost you money and time. So we can't afford sometimes to rebuild, for example, a new model mock model or go through the pain of redesigning the entire thing and testing again. So let's get it right the first time. This is also part of the Kaizen uh, or Japanese term that is you do things right the first time. Sustainable cost management, which is we need a mechanism in place to improve cost all the time. This is something that involves everyone, employees definitely everyone in the organization, so suppliers, stakeholders as well. Uh, as in the case of recycling, everyone is concerned, for example, in recycling. In the case of Korea, they do, you must segregate all your trash into plastics, biodegradables, glass, and this is something the entire nation is concerned with. So this is a sustainable cost management system or measures taken by the Korean government and the Korean people are all participating in this um, cost management or, or environmental management or um, environmental or better 
uh, waste management systems, for example. Operational performance improvements. These are improvement done to improve operational performance. This is something you do. And this is, to simplify it, imagine your car. Every model of your car is a better model than the model before. It, they improve the performance of your car, the operations of your car, uh, by improving maybe engine, maybe capacity, maybe fuel consumption, electronics, uh, maybe adding computer to control various functions. So these are measures of improving performance. Okay. All right. Any question, you can email them to me. Uh, you can email them to me real time. I'll look at my email right now, or I could get back to you with any questions, or we can discuss them on next Sunday's class. Okay. Uh, there are a few things I need to discuss with you here. There are a few videos I encourage you to take a look at, and they explain. They take this process design into, and they elaborate on that in different ways which I highly encourage you to take a look at them. For example, data and process modeling, a process design here is just called process. So if you just search process analysis and design, it will take you to this page and you might get even more. Take a look at a few of these. They are really good types of production process, which is really nice. How to cut costs with the process analysis and process improvements, which is really, really interesting. And I liked it very much as long as 50 minutes. So you have to do it on your own. Uh, this one is about half an hour process design, which will be very beneficial for you. Okay, This was also interesting. Uh, the first one here, which is about five minutes and a half. So instead of adding it to this video, I'll just put links. Or uh, you could just go and visit these links. Just type any of these. And the video is avail available to you to watch as many times as you want. So you can, uh, the, the more you investigate, which you should, the more you will understand the topic better. Process variation in manufacturing, this is something big, especially for those in engineering, engineering students, which we don't have any, I believe. But this is something there, or quality control, quality and process, quality engineering, uh, this is something of, of an importance for them or to them. All right? So uh, I'll see you on Sunday. If you have any questions, let me know, or bring it on on Sunday, and we'll discuss, and let me know how you like your uh, this experience. Uh, of going on, I can elaborate more, uh, but uh, let me just stop here for a second, and uh, I uploaded this to your uh, LMS, let me just go to the LMS here, um, okay, there is something here I wanted to get your attention to, just one second, okay, so this is chapter seven. All right, let me just get to somewhere something we were discussing last. We talked about uh, impacts, cost, flexibility. Let's see if I could merge the two documents, the two powerpoints uh, here. This one here, process analysis, <coughs> and this one. Hey, these are really good. Uh, these gems. We talked about the task and the activity, these are the elements. So it's just a couple of things uh, here. We talked about identifying define ap appropriate performance measures, and that's what we discussed today. Um, let me just value stream. That's what we talked about. Value stream map, which is to highlight value added versus non-value added activities. Things that has add no value would have no value, you would leave them out, right? What you need is value added, okay? That's what we do. We need something that could add value. Anything with non-value would leave it out, uh, which includes costs associated with work activities of both value and non-value because there is cost involved. Um, strategies to improve process design focuses on increasing revenue. That's what we try to do, improve agility and product or service quality, okay? Uh, anything that decreases cost is something of importance and we're, we are concerned with. Process flow time, that's what we do, what we analyze in a process analysis. Um, maybe carbon footprint, which is what? It's environmental, environmental, 
that's what we mean by that's what we mean by uh, carbon footprint. Okay, that's what we mean by carbon footprint. Um, all right, let's just see the next slide here. Uh, Reengineering. I thought we covered that already. It's the rethinking, and that's what I want you to remember here. This is the key word: is the rethinking. Is the rethinking. Uh, let me see if I can, because highlights makes it better to visualize and maybe remember. Rethinking the radical redesign is the redesign of what? A redesign of a process, a business process. Okay. What I will do, I will add this slide selective, selective, or select slides and add them, merge them with this one I just closed earlier. And help achieve or improve any improvements, any improvements. Okay. Uh, to performance. So these are the keywords here, improving performance, such as cost, quality, service, and speed. Uh, let me just highlight this in red. All right. So here's a formula, That's uh, which usually we have software now to do that, but you need, uh, you're not concerned with it. Engineering so are something concerned with, but this is the breakup of the formula of utilization. Um, just a second. Bottlenecks. What are bottlenecks? Are difficulties, things that creates bottlenecks. Work activities that effectively limits. That's the thing. We have limitation here throughout the entire process. So when you look at the entire process, you look at you look for what you look for uh, bottlenecks that can limit the performance or efficiency or reduce, sorry, or it increases cost. Okay, so uh, identifying and breaking process bottlenecks is an improvement. Oh, sorry, it's an important part. So let me just get, so I was looking at improvements here. Uh, important part of the process of redesign. Okay, process of design and improvement. So to increase speed, to reduce waste, let me just highlight this for you. You have a different color, so I'm trying to improve the process actually of your learning experience here, and that's my intention. So I figured by coloring, for example, I'm improving the process, or the mere fact of delivering this class uh, in the way it's gonna as delivered is maybe improvements in the process. Okay. So flow time or cycle time is the average time taken to employ one cycle of process, okay, and there's a formula for it. This is a way just to calculate, to give mathematical uh, value to what you're trying to analyze or plan. And this is pretty much it. What I will do, I will integrate the two, uh, the two PowerPoints into one and upload it, uh, and upload it uh, to week seven, all right? Uh, this is pretty much all as far as process. Here in your books is process selection, design, analysis, but I rather go process analysis, design, and selection. So that's a better way of just understanding the topic. Okay, so any questions, do email them to me or bring them on to Sunday's class. I hope you feel better and uh, have a good